rarely is a team's season as spellbinding as was the Washington Redskins season of 75. The new season rightfully forecast a campaign of championship dimensions. What was not anticipated, however, was how heroically difficult the Redskins struggle would be. For the Redskin fans, the season will long be remembered for its week-to-week -week suspense and excitement. For the Redskins football team, the season will be remembered as an almost surreal odyssey, which journeyed through a staggering number of 11th hour victories and defeats. In looking back over the perilous course of 75, one can indeed say that it was both a strange and fantastic season. On opening day, a full house was on hand to cheer their team to triumph, and they witnessed a smashing victory. Defensively, the Redskins intimidated the Saints and turned around six points of their own. Offensively, the Redskins started number 43, Larry Brown, who missed the entire preseason rehabilitating an injured knee. Many doubted his ability to come back, but against the Saints, number 43 was running and catching like the days of old. And while Larry Brown made his comeback, Billy Kilmer was having the kind of day quarterbacks fantasize about. He threw two TDs to Charlie Taylor, a man who at season's end would stand as pro football's all-time leading receiver. By game's end, Billy's touchdown toll had mounted to four, including this rainbow to number 87, Jerry Smith. For the 10th time in 10 years, George Allen continued his monopoly on opening day victories as his Redskins triumphed 41 to three. The following Sunday, the victory celebrations continued against the New York Giants. The defensive front four made up of seven-year man Bill Brundage, nine-year veteran Dyron Talbert, two-year newcomer Dennis Johnson, and 15-year veteran Ron McDowell hammered down on quarterback Craig Morton for eight sacks during a frenzied performance that was highlighted by a Brundage tackle in the end zone that ended up a Redskin touchdown. There was no end to the celebrations that day as the Redskins rocketed to the third highest scoring binge in the history of the franchise. Number 21, Larry Jones set up some playbook blocking and then screamed Goldwood for a 52-yard touchdown return. It was indeed a total team victory, as the offense also burst into production with Billy Kilmer to number 80, Roy Jefferson, connecting twice for scores. Backup quarterback Randy Johnson played out Washington's hot hand that day, and at game's end with 49 points on the board, the Redskins stood confirmed as the league's most explosive team. In week three, the Redskins traveled to Philadelphia to continue a seven-year winning streak over the Eagles. Stick together, play as a team, don't worry about a thing, and be physical! But what was expected to be a mismatch ended up a nightmare as the Redskins turned up flat and lost 20 to 3. Outraged by their performance, the Redskins were in an angry and revengeful spirit against their Monday night opponent, the St. Louis Cardinals. 
Defensively, they punched home their aggression by limiting the Cardinals to 68 yards on the ground. The Redskins played off the high emotions of the evening to outsmart their opponent. Joe Theismann flipped a pass to number 52, John Pergine, who, to the surprise of everyone at RFK Stadium, rumbled into the Cardinals' end zone to give his team a 17-10 lead. But Jim Hart and his teammates quickly struck back to both deadlock the game and fill the stadium with the season's first air of tension. The fourth quarter belonged to the Redskins, however, and rookie running back number 22, Mike Thomas, handled the pressure of the winning drive with the markings of a star. Finally, with Thomas's running and Billy Kilmer's passing, the Redskins soared to success to claim a 27-17 victory over one of their most bitter rivals. One week later, the Houston Oilers were out to prove themselves legitimate contenders against the established might of the Redskins, and the result was a violent exchange of defense. played the game with wild-eyed intensity, but Billy Kilmer stood courageously calm in the redskin pass pocket. His boldness paid off in the second quarter when he stood up to the rush and found Charlie Taylor for a 64-yard gain. On the following play and with an oiler defenseman grappling with his legs, Billy somehow launched a pass and the Redskins led seven to nothing. By the fourth quarter, however, the Oilers stood on top, 13 to 10. But a final opportunity for victory arose with Mike Bass's interception. Having been turned back on a fourth and one situation earlier in the quarter, the Redskins, with three minutes left to play, stalled out in their final drive. And Mark Mosley was sent in to attempt to tie up the game from a distance of 47 yards. Mosley's kick was the Redskins' last hope for victory as the Oilers held on and ascended to title contention in the NFL. For the Redskins, the bitter late game drama was just the beginning of things to come. For two weeks later, against the division-leading Dallas Cowboys, high suspense would reign again. The Cowboys jumped out front early, 14-3, but Billy Kilmer got the Redskins turned around with a perfect strike to Frank Grant, who found a hole in the Cowboys' secondary and soared to the end zone. By the start of the third quarter, Billy was lofting a second touchdown pass to Charlie Taylor, and the game stood deadlocked, 17-all. But an interception tipped the balance in favor of the Cowboys late in the fourth quarter, and once again, the Redskins were battling for their lives. Two minutes remaining in the game, the Redskins stood at the Cowboy seven-yard line, where Billy Kilmer and Jerry Smith saved their team from certain defeat and tied the contest 24 to 24. The game then turned to sudden death overtime to decide the victor. And through the play-by-play -play announcing of Len Hathaway and Sam Huff, we can relive those moments. Redskins have their nickel defense in. 
Wide left is Drew Pearson. Wide right is Golden Richards. Staubach is being chased by Hamburger. Hamburger hits it. Intercepted. Ken Houston on the 40. He's up to the 45. He's up to the 47, up to the 50-yard line, and hit at the midfield strike. But Chris Hamburger forced that interception. Going to the right once again is Charlie Taylor. The back's in the pro set behind Billy Kilmer. Billy Kilmer takes the snap, looks downfield. Hits Charlie Taylor on the 22-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, there's Mr. Clutch, Charlie Taylor, and what an important catch that was. They now move that ball into field goal territory. In the eye are the backs. He's going to throw. He's looking for Charlie Taylor. Reception on the 10-yard line. He rolls out of bounds, but Charlie Taylor pulls it in. 55,000 fans standing here at RFK Stadium. And to give it to Larry Brown. He's at the 5. He's at the 3-yard line. Larry Brown, for a big gainer, pushes it close to the Dallas Cowboy goal line. And they just ran a sucker play on Jethro Pugh. The sucker play is you pull Walt Sweeney to your left, give it to the fullback coming through. Don't even block that tackle, man. They didn't even block Jethro. He didn't know where the ball was. And Larry ran right by. First and goal, Redskins. Well, they... And 24-24 the score. And the Washington Redskins with a back split behind Billy Kilmer. On the key. Touchdown, Redskins! The Redskins win the first overtime ball game this club has ever played. And that means that the National Football Conference Eastern Division is in a three-way tie. And you can't ask for better excitement, more thrills than 55,000-plus fans have seen here at RFK Stadium on this Sunday afternoon and evening in the nation's capital. In week eight, the Redskins with a five and two record were rematched with the New York Giants. Billy Kilmer got things ignited early with a pass to Frank Grant, who took off with the longest touchdown pass in the history of the franchise. 96 yards later, Grant was in the end zone, but the Giants were far from capitulation and the game became yet another ferocious clash of impassioned foes. The hitting was not one-sided, however and no less than three regulars joined a mounting list of injured Redskin players, the most vital of them being Billy Kilmer, who was sidelined with a shoulder separation. The Redskins' concept of team saved the day, however, and with Randy Johnson as the new quarterback, the Burgundy and goal pulled together and won the game on character. The offensive line towed in and gouged open holes for Mike Thomas, who showed the form that would make him the NFL's Rookie of the Year. At length, the Redskins scored 14 fourth quarter points to defeat the Giants 21 to 13 and write yet another chapter about a season when nothing came easy. Seven days later, with Randy Johnson replacing the injured Billy Kilmer, the Redskins gunned themselves into a 14-3 fourth quarter advantage over the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals counted with one score, but late in the game, the Redskins stood virtually assured of a 17-10 victory. But under an appropriately full moon in Bush Stadium, the saga of a strange and fantastic season played out its most bizarre occurrence. I want to tell you, there's no one even sitting in this stadium. They're all on their feet. What a nail-biter this has been, because these Cardinals and Redskins are really going at it. They can't let those receivers work their way free in that Redskin end zone. Hart is backpedaling. He's going to go across the center. And it's incomplete. Ball is dropped. He had the touchdown. Mel Gray had the touchdown. He was hit immediately, and he dropped that ball. It's incomplete, and that, my friend, should write the story to this dramatic ball game here at Bush Memorial Stadium. Well, wait Jim Hart has minute. to elect to go for it. Do we have a wait flag down? Wait a minute. There might be another call on this. you got a discussion between the officials. 
One guy called it a touchdown, another guy called it incomplete. And I want to tell you, when you talk about decisions, those are fast decisions. And I don't know who's going to win out. Pearl Toller called it a touchdown. The other man, the field judge, called it incomplete. Every one of those officials is in a huddle right now. They're discussing this. The Redskins awaiting their decision. They're going to walk to the line of scrimmage. They're going to signal to the crowd. They signal. Touchdown. Touchdown, Cardinals. A point after could tie this ball game up, Sam, and send it into overtime. I thought I saw everything, but I have it at the first time I've ever seen a touchdown awarded. In the overtime that followed, the Cardinals won the toss, the game, and sole possession of first place in the NFC East. The tenth week followed, and the fight for playoff survival entered a critical stage. With the Oakland Raiders as their adversary, Billy Kilmer to Charlie Taylor teamed up for one score, but soon afterward fell behind 20 to 9. They did not stay behind, however, for with just three and a half minutes remaining, a redskin touchdown tied the game 23 to 23. For the second consecutive week, the Redskins' captain stood wearily at midfield to initiate another overtime period of sudden death. Once again, tension hung visibly over the Redskins, while 55,000 partisans sat stunned as their team agonizingly fell into defeat and third place in the NFC East. One week later, the undefeated Minnesota Vikings were the opponent. And with the entire season on the line, the Redskins showed the rare and wondrous depth of their competitiveness. Ron McDowell's block of Fred Cox's field goal preserved the 31-30 Redskin victory. And the team that had all but been counted out of contention was back in the heart of a championship race. A week later, the Redskins were once again back on the feathered edge of survival. Tied 27 all with Atlanta, with but 56 seconds to play, Billy Kilmer waged a desperate war against time. Finally, with two seconds left, Mark Mosley's 39-yard field goal attempt was true, and the Redskins stood head high once again.
The 13th week found Washington and Dallas tied with identical eight and four records. The moment of confrontation was at hand. To the winner would go a wild card berth. Under any conditions, the redskin cowboy rivalry is bitter. But given the situation of the 13th week, the playing field was transformed into a battlefield. In the first quarter, the Redskin defenders played with vehemence and forced a turnover that led to a 10 to nothing Redskin lead. In the second quarter, however, errors turned the tide against the Redskins. First came a missed tackle that resulted in a 57-yard touchdown. And then came a fumbled punt return which put Dallas in goal position at the Redskins' 16-yard line. Roger Starbuck was quick to put his team ahead, but Redskin linebacker Harold McClinton made him pay dearly for the points. The casualty toll rose as the game raged on, and the Redskins, too, felt the sting of combat. Then in the fourth quarter, trailing by just 17 to 10, Billy Kilmer fell victim to a blitz and was lost for the game. With Billy forced out of action, the momentum swung irreversibly to the Cowboys. Once on the sidelines, number 17, bandaged and battered, watched silently as his team went down in defeat. For the first time in George Allen's five years in the nation's capital, his Redskins had failed in their bid for the playoffs. The Redskins did not realize their playoff ambitions in 75, but their stirring season was a testament to the highest principles of competitiveness in sport. With the 75 campaign now a recollection, what remains are a treasure of frozen images, of a valiant team ever in the pursuit of excellence.